on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to Southern California, where a Mexican restaurant is heading south. The only thing that's missing here in a hurry is a drive through Is that bad? The owner, Laura, was a successful caterer for years. I'm just adding a dining room. How could it be so hard? But barely a year into the restaurant business, Perla hates them. Nobody tasted before we did this? She is failing miserably. This is not a restaurant. Her chef is really a cook. Perla's never going to step up, ever. Perla's family to me. The food is really mediocre. That's like eating wet cardboard. Oh, God. <laughs> Look at that. This is unbelievable. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the restaurant is totally dysfunctional. Oh, wrap it up, please. <laughs> you are mad. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Will this owner be able to face the truth? Are you her boss? I am her boss. And she... Wrong. You're her friend. And have the guts to make the toughest decision... I don't want to lose this. ...of her life. I promise you it'll be okay. Or will Laura collapse under the pressure? Oh, disaster. It's hard, okay? I'm frightened out all hell right now. This is One Kitchen Nightmares... Your grandmother must be turning over in her grave. ...where Chef Ramsay may have arrived... Bloody hell. ...too late. Mama Rita, Mama Mia. Nestled in the hills 45 miles north of Los Angeles is the idyllic town of Newbury Park. This is where only a year ago, a single mom named Laura was hoping to fulfill her dream by opening a restaurant called Mamaritas. My grandmother was always cooking, and I was always being, you know, brought in to help her cook, and I loved it. When she passed away, I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to open up a place, and I'm going to name it after my grandmother. Welcome to Mamaritas. When I started the business, it was purely a takeout catering business. We built a really great reputation in a very short period of time. And before I knew it, I had customers that said, you need a restaurant. And based on my reputation and the fact that everybody wanted this, I went for it. All right, guys, we're open for business. Now I'm just adding a dining room, and I'm serving 200 people. I've served, you know, 1,000 people in a catering job. How could it be so hard? Colorado's really tender. Yeah, uh-huh. I cook for Mama Rita for six years. A lot of cheese, really nice with me. She's my right hand and my savior. I mean, she's family to me. Me much <laughs> love for you. <laughs> Laura is not a good boss because there's not a lot of rules enforced and no one necessarily knowing what they're doing. The direction I get from Laura is a little hit and miss, and I don't really think Laura knows how to run her restaurant. I need a cocktail now. Laura, as a restaurant owner, is inexperienced because she never had any training in this business. This is completely brand spanking new her. So was the catering business. But that was easier. It was small. This is huge. Uh, I know, I know. <laughs> when she opened this restaurant in the first week, Really, really busy. After two, three weeks, no more. During the first month, we were just packed. The public, they want the best experience, the best service, the best food. Sorry about that. Call them out and send them a free dessert, please. And I didn't deliver it. And I'm begging people, please come back and give me another chance. And some say, no, I'll never go back there again. The debt that I've accrued with this business is astronomical. I'm on the foreclosure list, so there's a chance I could lose the house. If I didn't believe in this, I wouldn't put my heart, my soul, every single thing I've got into this. I believe it can be saved if I can fix what's wrong. Some of the best Mexican restaurants in the world are not actually from Mexico, they're here in Southern California. Now, this restaurant here has been open just 12 months. Sadly, it's only months away from closing. There's got to be something seriously wrong. It looks beautiful. Wow. How are you? I'm good, thank you. A pleasure to meet you. Likewise. Now, this is Mama... I am Maggie. I'm the mother of the owner. I thought you were Mama Rita. No, I'm, no. Uh, I'm Mama so, Rita's daughter. Mama Rita's daughter. Where is Mama Rita? Mamarita is uh, buried in the cemetery over the hill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Not a problem. So Mamarita is your mother. Yes. And it's your daughter that is... Laura. Laura. I will take you to Laura. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. 
This will be my daughter, Laura. Oh, well, how are you? Fine, nice Good to, to see you. you. Come and just say, this place looks stunning. Thank you. My goodness me. Somebody spent a lot of money here. And you run the place. I run the place. I try. This is very different for me. Catering is, was my specialty. That's what I did before I opened the restaurant. Ah. And I did very well at catering. Top dish, what would you recommend? The homemade tamales. Oh, look, I love tamales. Well, good to see you. Good to see you. Time to eat. I'm starving. Excellent. This is my table. Thank you. Perla. Yes. When his order comes in, we'll let you know. And you need to be the one that cooks his food, OK? I think Chef Francis, he said everything menus. It's good. How are you, sir? What's going on? I'm amazing. How are you? And you are? Brad. Brad, good to see you. How long have you been here? From the beginning. From the beginning. Mm -hmm. I can't believe how plush this place is. I know. It's like, don't judge a book by its cover, because you walk in here and you see this gorgeous place. But Mama Rita's doesn't live up to its expectations. If you can navigate me around, there's stuff to stay away from. Malotes. <laughs> Taquitos, Ooh. empanadas, de pollo. Three. Yeah. And why would I stay away from them? Just because I just think they're really dry. Mm. I respect your honesty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll bet that in my pocket. Got it. Holy crap. That's really scary. Within five minutes, we've been in the restaurant and then told what to stay away from from the head waiter. Ay, ay, ay. Hot sauce. Thank you. Oh, this hello. is Cheryl. This is uh, my manager. And you manage the kitchen and the front of the house? Um, front of the house. Oh. And catering. And I do catering as well. What's wrong with the place? Lack of customers. So why have we got lacking customers? We need more customers. We need to figure out how to get more people in here. Okay. Thank you. And you're the manager? Yeah. Oh, my God. A manager that didn't know what's wrong with the restaurant is scary. Okay. Look forward to catching you up. Not with the manager. Thank you. Jesus, the manager that doesn't know what's wrong. I don't know what answer he wanted. I mean, what was wrong with that? Lack of customers. Brilliant. That's a great insight, isn't it? Right, here we go. Let's start off with the tamale. Got it. The chimichanga? Yeah. Let's go for a burrito. I think that's enough for now. All righty. Thank you. Did anybody taste anything? Perla, everything was good? Yeah, uh-huh. If Chef Ramsay doesn't like my grandmother's recipes, that concerns me. Anybody taste the tamales? This is the bueno. See what he thinks. Tamale and extremely hot. Right. Oh, no. God, I hope the tamales are moist. Jesus. It's like soaking wet newspaper. Gee. That is so dry. Goodness me, that's a fresh tamale. Well, when we make them, we make them in big batches, and then they're steamed, and then they're served, because we make such large volumes at a time. So you're sounding like the catering company now. Yes. And they go out like that? It's, they should be wet enough with the sauce inside that when you re-steam them, they stay moist. What an embarrassment. And this is your chef that ran a catering business? Correct. Jesus. OK. OK. Hates the tamales. Really? Perla hates them. He said it's so dry, it's inedible. He said it's embarrassing. Yeah, very dry. Are you cooking everything? Yeah. Perla, are you cooking the chimis? Uh-huh. I use the microwave for chimichangas for one minute before they fry. They taste really, really, really good. OK, chicken chimichangas. Ooh. Chimmy, 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 changa. It's dry. It's shards of dry chicken. I now what? Here's the thing. Honestly, chimmy, changa. Chimmy, chuck it in the bin. What a shame. Perla, he hates the chimmies. He didn't like them. I taste before. It's really good, the flavor. Not to him, apparently. I'm frustrated at my kitchen. It's a bit of a punch to the gut about my food. Steak burrito. Look at that. That is gross. That has to be the biggest ad for any diaper anywhere in California. Oh, no. Oh, God. My God. Jesus. That's like eating wet cardboard. Have a taste of that, please. 
Not too hell. The steak was gamey. It was kind of like a car wash, moist and mushy. Oh my god, that is disgusting. Let me taste the steak. He says the steak tastes like shit. Did you grill him fresh steak for his burrito? Yeah. You didn't pull it from here, right? <laughs> Didn't we taste everything before we put it yeah. out? Ugh. It's really salty. Nobody tasted before we did this? <sighs> Damn it. When you have somebody come in that rips apart all of your food that, that I was proud of, it hurts a little bit. I'm so sorry. I'm not here to slag you off, however. I just want something fresh. After a lunch of disgusting dishes, Chef Ramsay has quickly realized why this beautiful restaurant is in an ugly situation. Come round, please. Thank you. So, this is. Perla? Perla. Sadly, the food was dry. It's like eating processed food. Is the food today the same that you serve? when you have a catering event. Yeah. You've been serving that crap. Why don't you do it properly? Because everybody loved my catering. It's completely two different monsters. It's not going to work. Coming out of a catering business, trying to run a restaurant that cost how much? 1.5. 1.5 million dollars. Yes. Oh, my god. And I'm 350 in the hole right now on top of that. So you're in for just under $2 million. God bless your grandmother, but she must be turning over in her grave. Coming up, can Chef Ramsay turn this caterer, I'm shocked, into a restaurateur? This is not a restaurant. I'm scared shitless right now. Or will Laura's bad habits... Oh, my God. Look at that. <laughs> ...continue to get in the way. You are mad. And later... This is the fight of my life. Laura is in for a gut-wrenching decision. Are you her boss or are you her friend? I am her boss. Bro, choosing between keeping her friendship... I'm scared and it's hard, OK? ...and keeping her restaurant. I have to figure out a way to say that. After a miserable lunch, that is disgusting. An alarming postmortem. You're in for just under two million dollars. Chef Ramsay decides he wants a better understanding of how this team of people work together in a dinner service. Hello. Hello. Tonight, I'm nervous that Chef Ramsay may not think that the restaurant is running efficiently. I really hope that the staff hold it together and that they shine. What can I get you to? You got it. And for you, sir? I'll take the uh, chicken. All right. I'll put that in for you guys. Thank you. I would say that the ticket times are not even five minutes for entree. I cook really fast. Hey, food! Chile relleno, por favor. Normally coming out this fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Here we go. Rose con miscos. Chili relleno. Here we go. Is that chicken taco. I'm not done with my soups. Tiene ramita. It's quicker than the drive-through, isn't it? Pretty much. Mm. Here you go. With food flying out of the kitchen at an incredible pace. Three minutes. The kitchen staff now has time to socialize. Miguel, ¿ya te peinaste de copetito y todo para salir o qué? Mira. Have you cleared the board? All the tickets gone? Yeah. Wow. So just standing here for the next couple of minutes. I can't believe how fast the food comes out. It's like a conveyor belt. Is, Is that, that bad? It depends on quality. OK. While the customers may appreciate the fast service, oh, here comes my shrimp. they are not appreciating the food. It's kind of dry. Dry? I mean, it's not like I went back to this. No, I know, obviously. Stop, stop, stop. The only thing that's missing here is a drive through I'm pissed. He's telling me that all my food is shit. It's very frustrating when I don't know how to do it another way, because this is all that I know. That is unbelievable. This has to be the fastest serving restaurant in America tonight. But it's not really a restaurant. It's a fast food factory. What a joke. On the heels of a ridiculously fast dinner service, bye-bye. Chef Ramsay suspects that shortcuts are being taken in the kitchen. Wow, fast, man. 
so it's time for a little investigation. What are those? Tamales. Oh, the tamales. Yeah. They're the frozen. Ah. So these are your chimichangas. Are they frozen as well? Yeah, frozen. Wow. When was all this made? Two months. Oh, my God. Can you get me Laura, please? Yes, yes, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. What? Come round, come round. Don't run, not in the kitchen. Here's the thing. You're serving chicken that was cooked nearly two months ago. You're frosting it and then reheating it. And are you wondering why it's dry? Were you aware of this, or...? This is what we did for catering. Unbelievable. That may be why the place is struggling. Where are the freezers? Freezers there. Oh, my God. Oh, tortillas. I hope everything's right in there, the shelving and all the food. Oh, my God. You're joking, aren't you? Look at all this stuff here. Bloody hell. This is unbelievable. Look at that. This is what we did for catering. You must have hundreds of portions of stock here. He just kept grabbing and grabbing and stacking my arms with it. All this pre-cooked, pre-rolled, frozen, then defrosted is just absolutely appalling. This is not a restaurant. You are mad. I've got to wash my hands. Fucking stink. They're tripping everything apart, telling me, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. When somebody takes something that you have and butchers it, it hurts. A shocking discovery at dinner service. Look at that. You must have hundreds of portions of stock. Confirms to Chef Ramsay that problems at this restaurant are bigger than he anticipated. What a day. Lunch was disappointing. Dinner was shocking. It started off with defrost and serve, followed by defrost and serve, followed by defrost and serve. You're running a factory. Mm -hmm. It's mass produced. Treating food like a processing plant. Perla, is that quality what you cook? Mm. Did you honestly think that serving defrosted food slopped out it was going to make you a success. I did well at catering with it. You have driven away more customers than you could ever imagine. Can I have a word with Laura? Thank you. Sit down. I am... Um, I'm worried. I don't get your level of commitment to make this place work. I, I never pretended to know how to run a restaurant. You're smart, but you're not being smart. Apparently not. This food is sinking you faster than you fucking know it. Oh, I don't want to lose this. I want to figure out a way to fix it and make it great. But you really have to start taking responsibility for what you're doing. The difference in running a catering outlet to running a wonderful restaurant is night and day. And the quicker you get that through, your head will be the start of the change. I'm really sorry. I am too. I've gone for something that I maybe shouldn't have gone for. And now I'm here, and I have to figure out a way to save it and fix it. I'm scared, very scared. God. what happened last night. Laura, she's not stupid. She's more scared, almost petrified. So in order for me to help her to get over that fear of change, I'm going to take the first step for her. And there's only one way of doing this. Goodbye, Frozen. Look at that shit. Oh, my God, what the state of that. A year old. There's enough chimichangas here to last me a lifetime. Goodbye, catering. Hello, restaurant. 
Chef Ramsay has found over $12,000 worth of frozen food in the freezer. Hello, Laura. Good morning. How are you both? Fine, thank you. Now it's time to confront the owner and the chef with his findings. Today's about change. Yes. Uh, go and have a quick look around the kitchen. You'll see some adjustments. So far, all looks the same. I was shocked. Everything was gone. My freezer was empty. My walk-in refrigerator was empty. I had no idea what was happening. Oh, my God. To show the enormity of the amount of frozen food, oh. Gordon has not only removed it from the freezer, but has left it on display in the restaurant. I was completely floored. I had just the sinking feeling in my stomach. Look at this shit. What's going on there? <laughs> oh, they've gone green. Jesus. Look, he's got his Mexican sombrero on. <laughs> Rice. Chimichangas. Five dozen. Ten dozen. Twelve dozen. Ouch. And this isn't a catering business? I didn't know it was this bad last night. Here's what concerns me more than anything. These are from last year. August and July. Last year? What the fuck's going on? I'm shocked. I can see why. Have a good look. I'm gonna wash my hands. It fucking stinks. I guess I should be on Pearl of more to make sure that the structure is there and that things are being handled the way that they should. But then again, I own the restaurant, so everything comes back to be my responsibility. This has made me feel quite ignorant. Next. This is my last chance. I have put it all on the line for this. Laura makes an attempt to turn around Mamarita's. Perla, you gotta cook the steak. It is raw. What a disaster. Oh. Wrap it up, please. But she may have to do it. Give me an apron. All alone. We gotta be able to do it. And later. No one's ever gonna take advantage of me again. A confrontation. Are you her boss? I am her boss. And she Wrong. You're her friend. That puts Laura and Perla's strange friendship. It's hard, OK? On the line. It'll be OK. I promise you it'll be OK. You don't want to miss what's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. I don't cry. Today, Chef Ramsay is hitting the streets, trying to gather former customers of this young restaurant. He's hoping that they will hammer home to Laura what this community expects from Mama Rita's. Nice. What is this? Who are all these people? Chef Ramsay knows that often the best way to get his point across is through the voices of others. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, good afternoon. I was pretty shocked to see all these people show up. I really didn't know what to expect. Thank you so much for coming. It means a lot for you guys to make an effort to be here. These are ex-customers that were here at the beginning to support this restaurant. It's important that we understand what went wrong when we had the chance to open this restaurant. Please find out what happened. I'd like to start. OK. Over the time, we felt we weren't getting the service that we wanted, and the creativity of the food was really lacking. Um, on two different trips, I got sick within, like, a two-month period. And when I came here two months later, I got sick again, and I kind of stayed away. Defrosting food. The whole table kind of got stomach issues afterwards. Ouch. I guess I underestimated the palate of the common person. Some of the items we freeze, and as we've been going through, we're thinking that that's probably what it is, and we're not going to freeze anymore. So hopefully that will take care of that issue, and that's what we're changing. Thank you for being so honest. I can vouch for Laura. Frozen has gone. Yes? <laughs> I can't wait to see you again, but next time it's going to be inside the restaurant rather than outside. Thank you so much. Right, we've got work to do. That's an eye-opener. Today, speaking to all those people, I realized people know good food. I respect that, and that's what I want to give them. To make the transition from cooking frozen to fresh, Chef Ramsay has just the challenge in mind to inspire Laura and her chef, Perla. Chicken, shrimp, I've got steak here. 30 minutes. I'm having a bit of a cook-off now. Choose between the shrimp and the chicken and cook something really delicious. One minute gone. Let's go. It felt good.
good working with fresh ingredients. It was fun to just grab something and just throw it all together and come up with something good. Let me think, let me think. What's the matter? I'm thinking. You're thinking? I'm really nervous because I do not have idea for what I cook. 15 minutes left. Ay, ay, ay. Perla, get moving. I was nervous about what she was making. No pressure, Perla. The creativity seems not to be present. Five minutes, we're ready to play, yeah? Yep. Ready? Let's go. Uh, all right, let's go. Chef Ramsay not only wants the staff to taste the difference between frozen and fresh. Not a single item on the plate defrosted anywhere. He's also looking for the staff to choose which of the three dishes goes on tonight's menu. OK, what is it? They are blackened shrimp tacos. That looks good. Darling, what is it? Garlic breast. Garlic breast with? Garlic and salt. Garlic and salt put on the chicken breast. She just said garlic salt, and that's it. It wasn't very creative, and um, that scares me. OK, we've got a flour and steak, beautifully marinated. Mango salsa served on a little bit of pickled Aww. vegetables. Finish with uh, avocado butter. Yum. OK, let's go. Take a taste. Oh, it's so good. It was amazing to taste Chef Ramsay's dish. You could tell it was going to taste good just by looking at it. How do you, Robert, what do you think oh, of the shrimp? Really good. <laughs> How's the chicken? Perla's dish had no flavor. It's yeah. a little bland. It needs something to spice it up. OK, good. Which dish goes on the menu? The mango salsa. Shrimp is really good. So both the shrimp and the flour and steak are special tonight. I'm disappointed in Perla, given her opportunity to try to shine. Unfortunately, I think it fell a bit short. For tonight's dinner service, Chef Ramsay has insisted on using only fresh ingredients. So for the first time, Mama Rita's led by Laura and Chef Perla will operate like a restaurant and not a catering service. Hello. Good to see you guys. Thank you. You enjoy now. Just letting you know, our specials are skirt steak with mango salsa and blackened shrimp tacos. The steak special? OK. We're cooking everything fresh now, so enjoy your meal. Chef, do you have anywhere special you want me? You're just doing my thing? Uh, yeah, as normal. Running as normal. How's the uh, specials going? Specials are going good. You're going to have some of those steaks coming up now. I've yeah, been good. pushing it, and so it's coming. I'm scared about tonight. Cooking everything fresh like this, it, it, it's going to be its going to be like something she's never done. And Perla's got to get into a whole new mindset. El pollo and ahí para chicken taco no se ha puesto. Perla's team has quickly produced the first set of specials. This is 24, yeah? Gracias. All right, I got your chef specials. And it appears as though the kitchen has adapted well. But have they really? You guys good? Was everything OK? It's rare. I'll take it back. Cut into know? yours. Well, you know what? Too rare. I do a little bit more, yeah. It's mad. It's rare. Guys, you got to cook the steak. Look at it. It is raw. Look at that. No, this is medium rare, eh? This isn't medium rare anyway. That is rare. Perla, I want you overseeing the entrees, making sure the steaks are cooked properly, and you shouldn't be doing this little stuff. You are the chef. Finally, a voice. Give me an apron. I have people back there that don't know what they're doing, so obviously I need to be more hands-on in the kitchen. The specials are going, you guys. Leave those items out so we can use them and get to them easier. I need these washed immediately. It's very muy caliente. Maria, you're making me those churros? Yeah. Rapido, please. Have the refires gone out? It's my redo. Where's my... Did the other one go out yet? Why'd you take... Why'd we take one without the other? Uh, that's incredible. On the back of all this negativity, I finally think the pennies drop with Laura. All of a sudden, she's found a voice, and she's treating this service like it's her last. Did you get one of them yet? One... There you go. Let's give that one to Louie. Thank you. OK, here's another steak up. I need you guys to keep up on this. I shouldn't be back here doing this for you. Right, Laura, let them do it now. Let them do it now, yeah? Laura has shown that she is willing to step in to do whatever it takes to help her restaurant. But now Chef Ramsay is looking for Perla to do what she is paid to do, run the kitchen. Perla, I need you to step up the mark now, please. You need to take control. You want me to decorate the plates? No, 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 let them do it. Look how many staff there are behind me. I know, but I... 
They were falling all over themselves in the kitchen, and there were a lot of them on the line. This is incredible. Laura, that's prepared to go to hell and back to make sure this restaurant survives. However, I don't get the same feeling from a staff. I don't think they actually give a damn. Unbelievable. It's totally wrong. It's raw? It's raw. You better say it back. You can get the waiter to come here. This her fish is raw. Fish is raw. What? For God's sake, guys! Look! There's no excuse. I mean, I, I... It's like fish out of a fucking sushi bar. Come on, guys. If I don't do something immediately, it's gonna be gone tomorrow. I just hope we can do it. We gotta be able to do it. If we don't do it, it's not gonna work. Tonight's difficult transition from cooking frozen to fresh only confirmed what Chef Ramsay was already feeling, a lack of confidence. Tonight didn't exactly go to plan, did it? No, it did not. Perla is not a head chef. I think tonight confirmed that. Surely you must see that. I, I, I don't know what to do with that. Perla's family to me. She's not an employee that I can just cut you know, after so many years of being by my side. There was one strong asset, quite refreshing, and that was you. I felt like this was your last service. You were almost fighting for your life, fighting to stay open, fighting for every customer, every dollar, and you cared like I've never seen you care before. It was the first time that I actually really started to believe that you've got what it takes to turn this place around. We're not going back. Tomorrow, we are relaunching this restaurant as a restaurant for the first time in this town. Thank you. Come here. Thank you so much for everything. Get some sleep, OK? It was great for Gordon to sit with me and feel that somebody has some faith in me. I'm an absolute fighter, and I tell you, this is the fight of my life. Gordon is looking to revive Laura's spirits and avoid a repeat of last night's service, so he's come up with a surprise solution for the crippling problem in the kitchen. Come in, please. All right. Now, here's the big change, a humongous change. Hang on a second, I've got to get it. This is Naris. Hi, Naris. Hi, Naris. Hi, guys. How are now, you? This lady has been with me four years. She's an amazing chef, obsessed with Mexican cuisine, and I am giving her to you as a gift. What she is going to do is install a proper service in this restaurant. She's going to consult properly for the first time since you've opened this place. I would just like to say that I'm really, really excited. Your restaurant is beautiful. Thank you. We're going to make your kitchen beautiful. We're going to make your food you. beautiful. Thank you. It's going to be great. Thank you I'm so excited. much. I'm excited. One hell of a talented chef, and I mean that. Right. Thank you. Thank you, my darling. Oh, God. I can't believe it. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. She's going to teach Perla so much. For the first time in a long time, I have some hope, and I, uh, I think we're going to get through this. Gordon is hoping chef consultant Norris will get the kitchen in order. But there's another huge change tonight, the menu. First of all, look at the colors. Oh, wow. my God. It's like a rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> it's fresh, seasonal, and it is incredibly authentic. Taco salad. Oh, that looks yes. good. Carnitas, slowly braised. Mm. The sizzling fajitas, that is going to be piping hot. Please be careful. Have a taste. Mm. Oh my gosh, you guys. Mm. The flavor. Ooh, that shrimp is good. The new menu is awesome. My mother would be so proud of right now. We're all so excited last night. With Mama Rita's facing its biggest night ever, Chef Ramsay is willing to give Perla one more chance to command the kitchen. But this time, he has installed a safety valve, and her name is Narice. Right, uh, Perla. Yes. Tonight, we really have to show that you can adapt to cooking in a restaurant. And there's a big difference. Narice is here to help you, but she can't do everything. So show some spirit to try and get this place back up to where it should have opened nine months ago, yeah? 
Excellent. Good luck. How can we not have a successful night? I mean, I've got one of Gordon's chefs to work in the kitchen, and I think Perla will do all right. Hello. What's the name under? Gun. Okay, come with me. There you go. This is our new menu. Everything's fresher now. We're kind of revamping everything. Let's just start off with the order of guacamole. Guacamole to start? Stick to I will uh, put that order in, and it should be up shortly. Call out the order. Appetizer chicken taquitos, Miguel. So make sure you mark them, OK? Start marking appetizer. Dinner. Carla. Yes? I'm, I need you to set me up a fish taco, OK? Carla, are you ready for the tacos? Carla. Listen to me, please. Let's get 34 out. Or whatever that is. I need send me up fish the fish tacos. Send me up the plate so I can just pay, put the fish on there, please. Please. No, Reese, I need to pick up 34, yes? Yeah, I have it. I just need the plate set up. Right, no, Reese. Yes, chef. There's four of them standing watching you do everything, and no one's doing anything else. You've got to pick it up, Perla. Perla, are you ready for the tacos? No, not ready. Can you believe that? Cheryl. So you just walk right past that table, everything's empty on there. You can't clear away, or do you want me to do it for you? This one? That's good. It's empty. You guys all done here? It's 20 minutes into dinner service. Perla, pull your tickets. Don't let him hang like that. And already Perla is struggling to organize the kitchen and her staff. I've never seen so many people standing still behind the line. What are we waiting on? Firing the orders or not? Yes, yeah, chef. Perla, I need to start firing tickets now. Please. Um, last is has a What's unfolding in my eyes is fascinating. I'm just trying to get it set yes. like a normal restaurant, yes. not like a canteen where they're serving it en masse. Perla was still in a catering mindset, and with the cooking fresh and cooking to order, it's obvious she didn't know how to do that and make it happen. I wish they would come with our food already. Perla is clearly being exposed for her lack of leadership, and the kitchen is slowly sinking. Perla, we need to get organized. This is not, this is not working. But finally, an hour into dinner service, appetizers are leaving the kitchen. Can we change it up? There's burnt chips and not enough cheese. OK. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and send this back for you guys. Carla, let's focus. OK, we got to focus. What's the deal with 33? All right. Burnt chips, no beans, and not enough cheese. Fuck's sake. Guys, refire some more cheese on there, but no, don't burn the chips, yeah? Sorry. This is the difference between just taking stuff out of a fridge and dipping it in a fryer that got fried this morning or trying to cook it fresh. On top of the three pieces of steak they give me, they give it to me raw. Send it back. What's right. wrong with that? Uh, it's not cooked all the way. What a fucking disaster. It's incredible. You have the most amazing looking restaurant and a great tasting menu, but if you haven't got the right staff to put it off, you're screwed. Carla, take your tickets. Talk to me. What, what tables have gone out from the first picket? Perla was completely absent. Perla, yes, please put numbers on them. I'm not running the table. I don't know what's going on. I had to turn my head a hundred times to say, Perla, what's next? Call it out. What are we doing? Perla, talk to me. You got to talk to us. You can't, we're not, we're not psychic here. Perla realized the ticket times and started feeling the pressure. She fell apart. Perla, take control. She's not equipped to work a line. There's not one ounce of line material in that woman. Perla. 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 It's relaunch night at Mama Rita's. Perla has shut down, and the kitchen is at a standstill. Laura. Yes? Two seconds. I couldn't have made it any easier for her. It's clear now she's not making the transition from a line fucking processed frozen defrosted crap to cooking fresh. That is not head chef material. We're not looking for a super duper fine dining chef. I'm just looking for a cook that can cook from fucking start to finish. Tonight has been obvious. Yes, but can I will make a comment. I have I have a woman that is, has stuck with me through right. thick and thin for six years. OK, my big right. question to you. Yes. Are you her boss or are you her friend? I am her boss. And Wrong. She... You're her friend. It would break my heart to not have Perla as my head chef. But right now, I have to stand back and really look at what's best for my business. Right. Shut off. Who is? Perla. OK, look at me. Nerys, take over the line, yes? You, outside, five minutes, get some fresh. Take her outside. Let's go. Unbelievable. It's OK. It's OK. Look at me. It's OK. I'm scared, too. I'm scared, and it's hard, OK? 
I'm frightened to all hell right now. I've got to try to pull this off with the staff that I've got and this new way of cooking. That's OK. It'll be OK. I promise you it'll be OK. <laughs> Oh my, my. Coming in 30 seconds. With Perla off the line and the Reese in control. Get some lime on here, please, and finish these for me. Mama Rita's kitchen is finally on track. Umami tacos up, piping hot. Here are the fish tacos. Can I have a ramekin, please? Technically, I wasn't supposed to be on the line. I was just supposed to supervise, but I can't watch them go down. Good job. Now keep it up. Let's finish tonight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Carnitas. We got the mahi. Um, you can do it. Just focus. Chef Ramsay's plan and Narisa's rescue of the kitchen has resulted in customers being satisfied. This is one you want to keep. You like the new Riano? Yeah, yeah. And the relaunch ends on a positive note. Without Narisa, we wouldn't have been able to get through tonight. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. You guys, clean up a little. She knows her stuff. I mean, she's clearly a great chef. While the relaunch was a success, unfortunately, no one is in the mood for celebrating. Certainly not Perla, and definitely not Chef Ramsay. Tonight was made more difficult than it ever had to be. Perla's not a leader. She's never going to step up to the mark of a head chef, ever. But it's not rocket science. I know. No, he's... Over the next two weeks, I want you to separate the brigade, focus on the strengths, the weaknesses. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. That'll be good. Wonderful. Perla's strength isn't being a chef. And this whole scenario has brought that to light. And now it's blaringly clear that I need to do something about it. Laura, the future success of this restaurant is in your hands. If you don't extract out of her everything she knows about cooking, you're mad. It will never, ever work if you step backwards to your old ways. I won't do that again. Well, I'm going to run it like a restaurant. Good. Next time you come, you're going to see some staff changes. Promise me? I, 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 I give you my word. Come here. Stand strong. And good luck. I've got one hell of a headache. Did we honestly take a caterer and turn her into a restaurateur? That question will only be answered when she finally decides on what to do with Perla and her kitchen team. What a nightmare. Holy Jimmy Changers. After Gordon left, Laura worked with Narice to organize the kitchen and the staff into a fully functioning restaurant. Once the system is implemented, I think that will make it much, much smoother. That makes yeah. sense. And after two weeks, Laura finally made the staff change she promised Chef Ramsay. She installed a new head chef, moving Perla out of the kitchen and back to catering. Moving forward now, there is definitely going to be a split between my catering and the restaurant. They are going to be two different businesses. Well, guys, thanks for coming in. Oh, I don't okay. think my eyes were opened, and they haven't been open for a very long time. And it took Gordon to come in here and whack, 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 to get me to open them.